wh why would we, what's the purpose of an electrolytic cell? Why would we want to just set this up just so that we can pour energy into it? It's obvious what the purpose of this is to, to run our light bulb, but what, what's the purpose of an electrolytic cell? I was actually curious about that. Yeah. You guys know, can you think of any practical uses for an electrolytic cell? Well, is this the car battery example? That's one example. <laughs> but, I mean, so. Remember we talked about how galvanic cells eventually run down, um, right? Well, you know that there's such a thing as a rechargeable battery right. that you can charge up again. Why does this run down? It runs down when you run out of, when the, when the reaction runs too far forward. Um, well, if we can force the reaction to go into reverse, we'll regenerate. The starting materials, and then we can start all over again. Um, well, that's what we're, what we're doing here. We're basically taking this reaction, and now we're pouring energy into it to reverse the reaction that happened over here. So in this reaction over here, uh, well, I erased the half reactions, but in this reaction over here, we're forming zinc 2 plus, and we are um, forming copper. So this reaction over here is regenerating the starting materials that we would need to have a galvanic cell. So that's how a rechargeable battery works. If you have a rechargeable battery, the reason that it goes dead is that the reaction has gone too far forward and you've run out of the starting materials. Well, then if you plug the rechargeable battery into an outside power source, the outside power source just runs all those reactions into reverse and regenerates the, the, um, the, uh, the starting materials that you started with. So one thing is that, um, so your car battery, um, when, you're, when you're using the car battery to run, say, the lights for your car, um, then it's being used as a galvanic cell. But then when you're regenerating, the car battery, it's being you're using it as an electrolytic cell. All right, um, then the reason that your battery, car battery almost never goes dead is because you can just use a little surplus energy from your gasoline to recharge the battery all the time. So your bad car battery never goes dead unless you leave the lights on when the car's off, right? Because as long as the car's on, um, you can just use a little surplus energy from the gasoline to recharge the battery. The other point here is, notice that in this case, we are making zinc metal. Well, then one good purpose of this is suppose you need some zinc metal. If you need some zinc metal, you can use this electrolytic cell to make the zinc metal. You, it'll cost you some energy to do that, but maybe the zinc is worth it to get that. So you can also use electrolytic cells to make things. So if you want to actually get a metal, you can plate the metal out by putting the energy in to get the electrolytic cell to run. So those are a couple of the uses of electrolytic cells. Yeah, actually, I think you'll, you might see some problems about plating metals. That's a common way that these problems are set up. That's a practical use in uh, in industry. Okay, well maybe to save time we won't go through all the same reactions. So is there anything else we have to talk about here? But the one thing we haven't talked about, I guess, yet is the positive and negative electrodes. Mm -hmm. So is the cathode here going to be positive or negative? Positive. How would we figure that out? Spell like cathode or like cation. No, so, that's totally different actually. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cat and the cat usually means positive. That's how I've been remembering it. I know you didn't say that, but that's how I've been remembering it. Now let's see if that's right. So um, uh, how can we figure this out? You, you're on the right track. Where are the elect where, which, which electrode are the electrons moving towards? That's right. Do they want to move there? Yes, because reduction is being electrons, right? Now are the, electrons, are the electrons moving here spontaneously, or are they being forced? So they don't really want to move here, in a sense. They're just being forced. Well, what would explain why the electrons don't want to move here if this was positive or negative? Because it's negative. <laughs> yeah, does that make sense though? Where do electrons want to move? Um, they want to move towards the positive terminal, right? So this has to be negative. Otherwise, we wouldn't need an outside power source to make the electrons move here. So this must be our negative terminal and this must be our positive terminal. Why are the electrons moving here if it's negative? because they're being forced by the battery. This whole setup wouldn't make sense if this was positive because then we wouldn't need the battery. The electrons would move there automatically. Okay, so the, the, um, you, you, did part of, you did half of the logic and there was half that you left out. The half that you thought about was you, you remembered which way the electrons were moving. They're moving towards the cathode, but then you have to ask yourself, do they want to move there? That tells us what the sign should be. But near as I've used that term a bunch when we were going through these problems, I've asked who wants to be reduced, who wants to be oxidized. I think it helps in a sense to kind of personify things a little to try to understand uh, some of the logic here. Okay, so um, this is the one big thing that's different between these two cells. One thing you might have noticed is lots of things are the same for electrolytic and galvanic cells. Um, the cathode is the site of reduction in both of these cases. The electron moves towards the cathode in both of these cases. Reduction always means gain of electrons. 
The one big thing that's different is the signs of the electrodes. And the reason people get confused is they don't know what's the same and what's different between the different types of cells. Well, the one surprising thing that's different, I guess, is the signs of the electrodes. Now, you mentioned something like, um, you said, gee, um, cation means positive or something like that. And that's true. There's a mnemonic. A cation is a positive ion. We could think that the T stands for positive. And an anion is a negative ion. We could think that N stands for negative. But that only works for cations and anions. It doesn't work for cathodes and anodes. So cations are always positive, and anions are always negative. But cathodes don't have to be positive. In fact, we've seen cathodes are positive in galvanic cells, and cathodes are negative um, in electrolytic cells. So we can't use that same mnemonic that we used for cations and anions. We could still say, um, if we have a salt bridge, which way are the cations going to move here? Which way would the cations move in the salt bridge? Because it's opposite, so would they be going, or is it going to, it's going to act the same. Would they move towards the cathode or towards the anode? In this case, would it move through the, for the positive ones, would move to the cathode, right? Still, the cathode is still gaining electrons. Remember, the purpose of the, the salt is to cancel out those, those electrons. So the cation here would still move towards uh, this cell over here, um, which is, again, the same as it was in the electrolytic cell. A lot of things are the same between the two cells. So that's something, again, that's always true. Cations always move towards cathodes, and anions always move towards anodes. So the bromide here would be moving in this direction if we had a salt bridge. So one thing that would be good to do after today is just try to reproduce what we just did. Take a blank piece of paper and write down all the general ideas we wrote down about galvanic cells, about E and delta G and the cells, and then write this, do the same and the positive and negative electrodes, and then do the same thing for electrolytic, uh, and then compare them and see how are they the same and how are they different. Uh, you want to do that a couple times until you're, until you're clear about all those different ideas.